This is the Group 4 project by Olive, Jaden, William, and Thomas. With the pandemic gradually subsiding, masks are still a crucial item in our lives, especially with mask mandates still present in Hong Kong. Thus, after three years of turmoil, we have finally decided to dive deeper and discover why masks are made with the material they are from a chemistry, biology, and physics perspective. First, we must discover what these masks are actually made of. In general, surgical masks are actually made of polypropylene, a thermoplastic polymer resembling a carbon chain with methyl groups. They form the thin mesh layers that masks have. At a glance, we can see why they would be used. Not only do they have a low density, rendering them easily accessible and portable, but their tough, flexible, and fatigue-resistant properties allow for them to stand up to a whole day of wearing. They're also economically produced, allowing for mo most people to afford them, as well as their resistance to fats and almost all organic solvents prevents the qualities of the mass from diminishing over time. So how exactly is propylene produced? Simply speaking, the initial reactant is propylene gas, a monomer with a double carbon bond in the middle, as we can see on the left. After undergoing a high temperature cracking of petroleum hydrocarbons and propane with catalysts, propylene is produced as a result. For us to answer the question of why polypropylene is used for masks, there are two main reasons. One being the hydrophobic nature of both masks and the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Diseases and pathogens are transmitted mainly through the respiratory system. One such part of this is the trachea the passage inside the neck that connects the nose to the, to the bronchi. The trachea has a defensive system against foreign substances. Along its walls are the epithelial cells that secrete a sticky mucus. It traps particles inside the trachea. Beneath the mucus layer, there are also small hair-like structures called cilia. They have a rhythmic beating movement that can move these trapped particles to the esophagus of the digestive system or back to the mouth by coughing. However, a weakness of this system is that it is only effective against particles larger than 6 micrometers, as viruses are typically 20 nanometers long, which is much smaller. The mucus and cilia cannot stop them from entering the human body, leading to a high chance of infection. The structure of SARS-CoV-2 is similar to other viruses in that it has a phospholipid bilayer that surrounds its body. Phospholipids are composed of a hydrophilic head meaning water-loving, and two hydrophobic tails, meaning water fuel. As the hydrophilic heads form the outward surface of the bilayer, this allows the virus to attach to water particles via a hydrogen bond. This is further strengthened by the adhesive property of water, the attraction of unlike molecules to each other. Therefore, the virus can be transmitted through humid air, saliva, and other liquids, making it easy for it to contact people. With the properties of viruses, there are certain structural features that surgical masks must have to prevent the trans uh, transmission of viruses, one of which is its polarity, which makes it hydrophobic in nature. The reason why masks have to be hydrophobic is because of something called the hydrophobic effect. This effect depends on the phospholipid bilayer surrounding viruses that allow them to be transmitted through water droplets or aerosols. If masks were not hydrophobic, Viruses that adhere to water droplets can still pass through the mask and infect the wearer. Another reason for it being hydrophobic is to protect the inner structure of the mask that might be disrupted if there is too much moisture. The material that makes uh, a mask hydrophobic is called spun-bound polypropylene, which forms the inner and the outer layer of a mask, with another type of polypropylene that's melt-blown in the middle. Polypropylene is naturally non-polar which makes it so that it cannot form hydrogen bonds with the water molecules that might be bonded to viruses, hence it is hydrophobic. Those two layers of mass repel water, as shown in the picture above, so that it cannot pass to other layers. Apart from polypropylene, some other types of cotton blend and polyester that are used to make masks are also hydrophobic. So now let's talk about how this material is made. And so the conventional way is a technique called melt blowing. And this method is used to make different micro and nanofibers. And how it works is you spray a polymer melt from nozzles, which are surrounded by high speed glowing gas. And the polymer melt is fused together in the air and blown onto a collector. 
So the benefits of using melt blowing for mass reduction is because it can make a material very suitable for mass, where the holes are small enough to filter out particles, but still let people breathe when wearing them. And it's also very efficient in making the material and easy to be made into these finished products. Furthermore, there's also a way to add an electrostatic feature, which I'll talk about in the next slide. So one feature of the N95 mask in particular is that there's this electrostatic method of filtering in the mask. And I'll briefly introduce, introduce this process and how it can filter small particles. So first, the surface is charged by a method called corona treatment, where ozone ions are fired at the material to make it charged. And then when this charged surface is near particles, since electrons exist around protons and electron clouds, they'll be distorted and pulled towards the positively charged mass. And since there's a force that appears when charges interact, these electrons move towards the mass while the nucleus moves away. And because the nucleus is positively charged and while the electrons are negatively charged, and since opposite charges attract and similar charges repel, this happens. And however, the electrons are closer, so they experience a larger force of attraction. And on average, there'll be a net force that pulls the whole particle to the mass. So this is how the charged surface can prevent COVID particles, because if they come near, they'll be attracted to the surface of the mass instead of passing through. There are many reasons why polypropylene is so commonly used to make masks such as how it's known as the safest type of plastic because of its non-toxic nature, so masks would not pose uh, too big of a danger to the wearer. Polypropylene is also easy for everyone to use because the fibers hold up strongly enough so that it forms a structure that many would find easy to get used to. Besides, polypropylene has been in production for many years with advanced tech, so it is commonly available and at low prices. Some spun-bound polypropylene is also washable so that it can be used in reusable masks. Functionality-wise, the porous and simple structure of polypropylene allows greater filtration of pathogens and pollutants in the air, enabling its ability to protect the wearer. As mentioned previously, polypropylene is molecularly nonpolar, so that it can repel water on its own. The weight of polypropylene is also quite light, and it's a breathable material. It also has little effect on the air pressure between the wearer and the mask, so the wearer would not feel burdened to wear a mask even uh, uh, to wear a mask even for long periods of time and be accustomed to it. Polypropylene, with its hydrophobic and electrostatic features, is also resistant to a lot of materials such as fats and organic solvents. In conclusion, surgical masks are very useful in preventing the transmission of diseases, especially during a pandemic. And most of its functions are thanks to the material that makes the most of a mask, polypropylene. Priced cheaply but functional in many different ways, there's no doubt that polypropylene has contributed a lot in our fight against COVID-19. And that's the end of our presentation. Thank you.